think I'd be doing a, another video on this channel uh, until the England kick off against Belgium. Um, but something's come up and I've seen all the things connected to it and there is only one thing I can say and it's what everyone else is thinking as well. Sack Rick Parry. Sack the man in charge of the EFL. Now what I'm going to tell you guys is damning. And you can find all this stuff on Twitter. You can find all it. All the evidence is right there. Uh, so I'm going to tell you guys first of all exactly what I'm going to be discussing in this video. So let's just get straight into it. I'm not going to say like, comment, subscribe. It's not about plugging anything in this video. I'm just going to say what I think and feel. So let me just show you guys exactly you know what's going on. So on Twitter, um, EFL boss Rick Parry fully backs the move that gives all the power to the biggest clubs, cuts the number of clubs in the league from 92 to 90, scraps the EFL Cup, reduces the championship playoff places from 4 to 3, and gives the third bottom Premier League team a chance to stay up. The document also requests a later Premier League start in August to give greater scope for pre-season friendlies and require a Requirements for all clubs to compete once every five years in a summer Premier League tournament. A summer Premier League tournament, ladies and gentlemen. And it seems like a form of B teams through the back door. Imagine every Premier League club with 15 players out on loan in the EFL. Huge change to loan system allowing clubs to have 15 players out on loan domestically at any one time and up to four at a single club. Who would have thought that when Rick Parry, the former Chief Executive of Liverpool and the first CEO of the Premier League, took control of the EFL, he would be essentially shifting more power to the Premier League and the biggest clubs and diluting the EFL product. While the number of clubs in the EFL will remain at 72, this will cost two EFL teams their place. The Premier League will reduce the 18 and the knock-on effect means 74 and 72 doesn't go. So two teams in League 2 will be banished to non-league. For a balance, there are good things in the document and it helps with the financial problems of coronavirus. But it feels like Rick Parry is selling off the family silver to get the bailout which the Premier League clubs agreed with the government to facilitate Project Restart. There's a few of the good things. $250 million immediately to the EFL to compensate its clubs for lost matchday revenue. Very, very good. Gives clubs more money, financial stability. $100 million one-off gift to the FA to cover its coronavirus losses, the non-league game, the women's game, the grassroots. 25% of the Premier League and Football League revenues do go to the EFL clubs, not the league, but the clubs. 6% of the Premier League gross revenues to pay for the stadium improvements across the top four divisions. Capping of away tickets at 20 quid, away travel subsized focus on safe standing, fair enough. Perhaps the only really good thing in the document is the, abolish, the abolition of parachute payments replaced by more effective revenue sharing of the Premier League funding between the EFL club. Who knows what that will look like though. So the source story comes from uh, Mark Ogden on Twitter. Uh, so the restructuring plan was actually put together by Rick Parry and has the backing of Manchester United and Liverpool. The Premier League have now criticised Rick Parry in a statement. Football has many stakeholders that were therefore, that in, therefore the work should be carried out through the proper channels enabling all clubs and stakeholders the opportunity to contribute. In the Premier League's view, a number of individual proposals in the plan published could have a damaging impact on the whole game. We are disappointed to see that Rick Parry, chair of the EFL, has given his on-the-record support. Both the Premier League and the FA support a wide-ranging discussion on the future of the game, including its competition structures, the calendar, the overall financing, particularly in light of the effects of COVID-19. The Premier League has been working in good faith with its clubs and the EFL to seek a revolution to the requirement for COVID-19 rescue funding this work will continue. So there's some good stuff in there. But it, oh, it, it's been overparried. That's putting it mildly. Overparried by the bad stuff. B teams from the Premier League. All these loan outs. Banishing League 2 teams into non-league. Because they want to... Sh <sighs> Sack Rick Parry. Sack the man. I don't care whether he was introduced into the EFL months ago. Sack him. He's not good enough. Former chief executive of Liverpool. Former CEO of the Premier League. And he's giving the Premier League more chance to succeed and abolishing the products of the EFL, the Football League. All these teams, all these clubs that are suffering are going to be given 
more of a kick up the backside than before. Why has no one in power sacked this man? Why hasn't someone brought in a better EFL chairman that cares about the product, that cares about the teams going under? And you're probably sitting there thinking, you're a Donny Rovers fan. You've got one of the best boards. You might not have the money to show for it, but you've got a board that always respects the fans, that always runs the club right. You've got a wonderful manager with attacking football. Why are you upset? Because I'm a football fan first. I might be a Doncaster Rovers fan. Rovers till I flipping die. But I'm a football fan first and I care about all the clubs that have been misused, misread, miss whatever, right? Over the last few years, in fact, no, this goes back years and years and years ago. This goes before Rick Perry, but Rick Perry just made it a whole lot worse. When Rick Perry was brought in, right, when he was brought in, clubs were already going under. You had Blackpool, you had Leighton Orient, you had Berry. You had Hereford United. You had all these clubs in the EFL and relegated from there into non-league before their collapse. And it was all to do with the EFL letting these guys in in the first place. Macclesfield, gone under, under Rick Parry. Berry and Bolton, Bolton only just survived. Charlton and Wigan, only just survived. But who's next? Oldham? Southend? Who's next? Who is next to bite the bullet? Who is next for ownership troubles? Barnsley's owners don't back the manager. You know, are Barnsley the next club to go? Are we going to see an AFC Barnsley in 10 years' time? In non-league? In the Yorkshire leagues? Because the EFL couldn't be bothered to sack boards? H how long will it take? And all that stuff there... In fact, let me read you off a few of those points again, shall we? Let me read you back a few of those points because I am absolutely furious about this. I'm going to read you a few points, right? I'm going to read you, hang on a minute, I'm going to read you a few points off of what's just been said because it needs mentioning. And by the way, all this information came from Dale Johnson, who's from the ESPN, a very respectable news source. Um, so here, this is what, let's go to back some of those bad points. Let's go back to some of them bad points again. So, give all the power to the biggest clubs. What, why, why, why do we do that? Why are the big clubs already getting enough power? And the fact that this has already been backed by Liverpool and Manchester United. I was a bit surprised about Liverpool because I thought their owner would have been not behind this at all. But speaking about it, this is a Premier League that's 19 to 1 in favour of those paper streams, which are an absolute joke, by the way. Paying for Sky Sports and BT and then paying extra 10, 15, 20 quid to watch non-televised matches on Sky Sports channels. I had to watch it on box office instead. Absolutely disgusting. And it's a crime in football. Um, so it doesn't surprise me. But it does not surprise me that Manchester United back Rick Parry getting all that power and all that money and all that responsibility because the Glazers don't do jack for the fans, they don't do jack for the football, they hire bankers to recruit their transfers, there's no reason why Jadon Sancho did not come to Manchester United, because they were dawdling about, they didn't care about the football, they didn't back Solskjaer, Oli's going to get sacked, they're going to bring in Pochettino, he's going to give them a brand new boost, get the shirt sales up and then they're going to screw them over, just like they screwed over Solskjaer, Mourinho, Van Hal and Moyes. It's just the same process and I've got no worries why the Glazers are back in this because I tell you what I'm not surprised any one bit because all they care about is making a profit why do you think there was controversy when Man United got took over 15 years ago why do you think there was a non-league club in Manchester set up on the back of this buy of the club buy of Manchester United because the ownership are in for the profit Set anything like this to give them more power? Take, take, take. Oh, I'm the Glazers. I'm from America. Let's take more money from the lower league clubs. Let's make them suffer. Yay, money! No! I'm sick and tired of going through the same arguments. Let's have a look at some more points. Cut the number of clubs in league from 92 to 90. That is a disgrace. I don't care whether it's league two or not. That is a disgrace. Cutting two teams out of League 2 just because you want to restructure. 
just because you want to give more power to the big clubs in the Premier League. When this guy's a former CEO of the Premier League, you know he's going to do stuff like this. Give more power to the Premier League that, you know, maybe it's like a parting gift. Maybe he's been forced to do it. Maybe it's, uh, oh, if I don't give more power to the Premier League, he's going to leak some photos of me that I don't want released. Maybe he's going to leak some explicit photos that I don't want to get out because I'll be in trouble for it. I don't know. Why, there's got to be some reason why Rick Parry backs the league that, sat, that, that got rid of him. Because he was a former CEO and he, he left, got rid. And comes into EFL and just destroys it completely. Let's have a look at another point. Scraps the EFL Cup. Some people will be happy about that. But to other people, this is an extra trophy. This is to give a club some silverware that don't usually win silverware. Why, why are people saying scrap it? Why are people saying why why, is, why are they saying scrap it? Because the EFL Cup is something that Silver wins. Yes, it's not the biggest cup competition in the world. Yes, it's not the FA Cup or the League trophies. But you know what? The EFL Cup is an extra fixture. It's a chance to face teams that you wouldn't usually face. It's a chance to face Premier League teams if you get closer and closer. The EFL Cup is a respectable respectable trophy. And why would that be scrapped just because it's in the plans? And looking at the other one, reduce the championship playoff places from four to three and give the third bottom Premier League team a chance to stay up. That, to me, is just an excuse to keep more teams in the Premier League and keep the championship teams in the championship. Keep them down at second tier. Let's leave the Premier League to themselves. Yay! In five years' time, there won't be any relegation to the championship. There won't be any promotion to the Premier League. It's just going to be the Premier League in a league on their own and the other three continue to suffer in their own little division. It's a disgrace. It's an absolute disgrace. And you know what? I'm going to see both sides of this. You know what? There are positive points that I picked out. Um, and that was the... Well, things like... Um, the 250 million immediately into the EFL to compensate the clubs for lost match day revenue. That's something I like. You know, I like that. Fair enough. But you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if they actually took some of that money and put it into their own pockets because they're businessmen at the end of the day and they don't care about football. I'm telling you, I, what did I say a couple of months ago in a, in a video, a month or two ago? The EFL and Rick Parry are a crime in football. This is just all bringing it back up. It's bringing that debate back up again. Let's have a look at some other good points. Let's give Rick Parry some praise for once in his goddamn life. 6% of Premier League gross revenues to pay for stadium improvements across the top four divisions. That includes the Premier League, so you know that most of it's going to the Premier League clubs. Come on, man. Seriously. There's, with the positives... There are negatives that could be in those positives that we may not see yet. But I'm picking them out right now because you know what's coming. Um, one big thing, and I, to be fair, I agree with this. The abolishing of parachute payments. Because once you get relegated, those parachute payments sometimes don't save clubs. Look at Bolton when they were relegated from the Premier League. Blackburn for a while. Charlton. You know, parachute payments don't save clubs too often. So it's good they're getting rid of that. But he says here, replaced by a more effective revenue sharing of the Premier League funding between the EFL clubs. You know in Rick Parry's mind, it's give the bigger clubs in the EFL more money and let the lower league, lower league clubs suffer. That's what it's going to be. That's going to be the more effective uh, payment option. It's an absolute disgrace. Absolute disgrace. And... For all of you Football League fans that are sitting out there thinking, well, we just got to go through the motions, he's not going to get sacked. There's a big thing that you can do. And you know what? I'll be one of the first in the queue. Why not? I'll be one of the first in the queue. Go on social media. Go in the streets. Pick up a banner. Sack Rick Parry. F the EFL. Get that trending on social media. Get this guy out of a job. Because he does not know how to run a league. There's a reason why he's not the CEO of the Premier League anymore. Think about it. There's a reason why he is getting scrutinised day in and day out. Because he does not know Jack. He doesn't know anything. And this really angered me today. Absolutely angered me. Because it's just dividing the, the gap between the Premier League and the Football League even more. And the thing... And the, and the, the worst thing is, the fact that clubs 
are in such a financial crisis already, they're trying to make it worse. They're trying to make it worse. And I'm thinking, how is this fair? How is this fair? And I'll reiterate that point again. I might be a Rovers fan with a great board and a fantastic manager, but I'm a football fan first. People have called me on the comment section the purest football fan in the world. It's because I love that. I love being the purest football fan in the world. I don't want to banter fans. I want to respect them when they're going through troubles. I don't want to banter them. If you want to banter them, fair enough. It's a bit of a laugh. But when you take it too seriously, I don't do that. I'm a pure football fan. I will stand up for clubs, even rivals that are going through through ownership troubles, that are getting money taken off them for no reason from the Football League. When these things kind of happen, I stick up for rivals and I stand with them as a football fan. And that's why I'm the purest football fan. Yeah, that's why I spit straight facts. You know, that's my new catchphrase, isn't it? That's my new catchphrase when, uh, that I mentioned on Broad's transfer streams. My new catchphrase is spit straight facts, you know, when the channel gets bigger, sell the merchandise, I don't care. But I'm spitting straight facts today because this is a disgrace. This is an absolute abolishment of what the football should be all about. Football should be about playing the sport you love. Not about cutting out people's livelihoods. This isn't just football clubs. The football clubs at the heart of a community aren't plastic fans. You know, this affects, this has a domino effect. When you take away a club, when you took away Berry, when you took away the old Hereford United, when the old Accrington was taken out, when Darlington was taken out and then reborn again. You know, all these clubs that had to start again, you affected people's businesses, you affected people's mental health, you affected people's livelihoods, their memories, their past, their present, their future, everything about that club they loved and the businesses around it, you completely destroyed it. And just like the old Berry chairman said about Steve Dell in the Burying Be uh, the uh, Buried Alive documentary on Copa 90 YouTube channel, I hope you can sleep at night. Well, Rick Parry, I hope you can sleep at night. Worrying that you might have just destroyed people's livelihoods. And you know what's going to happen. If they're thinking about cutting 92 football clubs into 90. You just know that the two clubs that are going to go. Are going to be Oldham and South End Because they're the ones in the most financial trouble at the minute. Because those two are in. I think South End's got their winding up order. And Oldham has had ownership troubles for about a year or so now. Uh, for a few years even. And... You just know, because they're the two most vulnerable clubs, the EFL are going to target them, like Berry was, like Bolton was, like Charlton was, like Wigan was, like Macclesfield was. They're going to target them and say, they're the ones we're going to get rid of. They're the ones in the most trouble. They look like they need help. Let's get rid of them instead. Let's let's put, let's put place on points deductions. Let's try and get them relegated as quick as possible. Then we can restructure again. Because they do not care. So every single football fan, I don't care whether you're Championship, League 1, League 2, non-league, Premier League. You know, AFTV, if you're watching this, pals, get involved. Let's start raising banners. Let's start protesting. Let's start trending. Sack Rick Parry. F the EFL. Anything you can do. You know, don't be abusive because then you become just as bad as they are. Don't be anything like that because then you just make it worse for yourself. But you protest peacefully. You don't be violent or anything like that. You don't be abusive online. You just protest peacefully. F the EFL. Sack Rick Parry. Anything you can think of that's not going over the line. Think about it and put it in writing. Whether digitally or on paper. You just do it. Because I'm sick and tired of football clubs that are going under under this ownership of the EFL because at the end of the day people can come out all they want and say well it's not their club you know but all this all this information today just confirms they are still the league that runs these clubs the clubs are in their league so it becomes part of their responsibility so Rick Perry needs to learn from this he needs to make it right otherwise bye bye Get sacked, go on, bring in someone who's actually a football fan and not a businessman. Because that's what football's run by, businessmen, not football fans. You can have businessmen, but someone who needs to be a football fan needs to stand up and take action. I was watching that Buried Alive documentary and there was an MP on there for Greater Manchester. And it was the day that Berry went out of the Football League. 
and it was the t and it was at the time when it was revealed that two or three candidates with the proper finances to run a football club and knew how to run a football club came in and the AFL said no 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 we're going to run Barry out we're going to destroy people's mental health we're going to destroy people's livelihoods and we're going to blame it on the club itself whether it's our own doing or not what what's fair about that what is fair about that I, I, I don't get it. I really, really don't. So, you know, hopefully Rick Parry gets the sack. We get a proper EFL director in to, that knows football and cares about the clubs. You know, and, the, and not just the EFL, but the Premier League need to learn from this because the Premier League are just as bad. When I saw those paper streams reports yesterday, and there was a specific headline on BBC Sports article, the headline read... Premier League pay-per-view pay streams will drive fans towards illegal streams. That sums up exactly how bad the Premier League have got with money. They're going to drive fans towards those illegal streams and they're going to make them watch. Because you just know that EFL is going to start upping online streaming prices like the Premier League. They're in cohesion with each other to try, uh, with each other to try and create a crime in football here. This is a scam. It's a scam. It's a crime in football. And something needs to be done about that. The Rick Parry needs to be sacked. The chief executive of the Premier League needs to be Jesus Christ. He needs to be hunted like those you know you know like those uh, if you've watched horrible histories, you know those slimy stewards when you've got the Witchfinders direct. We'll find some person and put them to death. You know. Witch, 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 you know. Put the chief executive in stocks and whip him around the town like Game of Thrones. Shame, shame, shame. Because that's what it is. Shame on Rick Parry. Shame on the Premier League. Shame on the chief executives. Shame on the businessmen that ruined the sport by putting money into the bigger clubs and leaving the lower clubs to suffer. Because the lower, cl the lower league clubs that you make suffer, they could be future big clubs. You never know. They could have brilliant owners, but they just need the money to help them. And you might deny them a chance to be a successful big club. And they could look back on that and say, well, the EFL let us have this little bit of extra money and put us towards on the path of success. So we could thank them for getting us on the right direction. Now you're going to have clubs going out of business and saying, yes, the owners could have done more, but the EFL are blamed as well. They're involved in this as well because they didn't stop it at the right time. They waited until it was too late again and then sent all the thoughts and prayers at the final hour it's a disgrace an absolute disgrace i'll be back later to, uh, this evening with my england belgium review uh it kicks off in a couple of hours but i need to calm down and get positive again for this england match because i'm absolutely furious with how we've treated these lower league clubs and all this stuff that's been read on here today it's a disgrace, an absolute disgrace. And I encourage you, I encourage you to send this out to every single football pa every single football fan because I've had enough and everyone else has had enough. Thank you very much, guys, for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that malarkey. I'm the C-H-A-L-L, Donkster Overs fan, spitting straight facts. Have a nice day. I'm fuming. I'm absolutely fuming. Rick Parry, you're fired. Oh, man.